Hello everyone, I've got some good news. FPV is not dead. I know, I know, none of you actually think that FPV is dying or going away <laughs> anytime soon. But I brought that up because, as you all know, the FAA recently released their final ruling on remote ID. And if you read those rules carefully, it sounds like possibly um, in September 2023, when the rules take effect for people flying, that uh, FPV would be in violation of those rules. So to help clear up some of that misunderstanding or less than super clear rules and regulations from the FAA, the FPV Freedom Coalition's president, Dave Messina, along with Kenji Sugihara, uh, requested a meeting with Jay Merkel. And Jay is the executive director of U.S. Integration Office with the FAA. And so they met today and they had a list of three main questions. So the first question that they were asking Jay was specifically related to FPV. And if you look at the remote ID final rule, it says the person manipulating the flight controls of the unmanned aircraft system must be able to see the unmanned aircraft at all times throughout the operation. Now, to me, when I first read that, I thought this means FPV is incompatible with these regulations. Because if you've got your goggles on, as the FAA has been telling us for uh, a long time now, that means you don't have direct line of sight with your aircraft. And so that counts as, you know, you, you're not within line of sight anymore. And then they sort of worked around that by releasing some rules that say um, you can have a visual observer standing next to you and in direct communication that can sort of be your eyes to keep eyes on the aircraft. So this to me meant there's no way you can fly FPV once these remote ID rules come into effect because the person behind the flight controls is the one who must be able to see the unmanned aircraft at all times. Now, we were pretty sure that the FAA did not intend to stop people from flying FPV. And that is the answer that we got from Jay Merkel today. Um, and well, and it wasn't just Jay. I believe there was a number of other people there as well in the meeting. I believe in addition to Jay, uh, he had two or three other FAA representatives um, helping him answer these questions. So from the notes I got from the meeting, I wasn't, wasn't at the meeting, but from what I've heard, it sounds like they did think a lot about the wording and chose it very carefully, and that they're happy with saying it must be able to see the UAS. Now, it's my opinion, and I, I believe that the FAA is going to have to clarify this statement somehow. Um, and I've got a few other smart people who also agree with me, and I believe that uh, Kenji Sugihara is going to follow up with the FAA and hopefully recommend that they release an advisory circular clarifying this point exactly. Because in my opinion, if let's say you were out flying FPV and somebody reported you to the police or the FAA or whoever, and they stopped you and said, you know, you're flying FPV, that's a, are, are you sure you're able to do that? And you bring up the rules and they read that line that says you must be able to see your aircraft um, and you've got FPV goggles on, someone would easily see that and say, well, you can't see the aircraft, right? So I think they do need to release some sort of an advisory circular or something that helps clarify this rule. So there is just no ambiguity. People know exactly what this means and that, yes, you can fly FPV. Um, and Hopefully they'll also clear up, does that mean you do need a visual observer with you when you're flying FPV, or do you not need a visual observer? My guess is that they still want that visual observer for the, because that's sort of how the rules have been, but maybe we'll get lucky and we won't even need the visual observer. Who knows? So the second question that people had for the FAA was around the idea of attaching a module to your own drone, and in the remote ID rules, they talk about home-built drones and that home-built drones can be used for recreational or educational purposes. But what about building your own drone, putting a remote ID module on it and using that for a part 107 operation or a commercial operation? And 
the answer that they got, as far as I understand it, is that that is also not an issue. That is not their intent to stop somebody from being able to build their own drone and put a remote ID module on it and use it for a Part 107 operation. So that's good news, especially for all of us who want to have, say, monetized YouTube channels and want to be able to fly home-built drones, be able to put a remote ID module on it. Um, maybe they'll need to come up with an advisory circular on this as well to try to clarify that somewhat because, again, the ruling, the actual final rule, isn't super clear on that. And then the third thing that we wanted to have the FAA uh, come up with an answer to is uh, recreational representation on the Drone Advisory Committee, or the DAC. Um, and if you've been following along with the news lately, you'll know that the FAA uh, removed a couple of people from the Drone Advisory Committee, uh, including AMA president, and they've added a few new people. And the new people are going to do their best to represent the recreational side of things, but that's not really the, the category that they were put onto the DAC under. And um, I believe uh, that Jay understands that we're concerned about this, and from the notes I've given, um, doesn't really say a whole lot, just that uh, Jay said that his team spent a lot of time with the recreational committee, or recreational community, they spent more time with recreational community than any other on the remote ID rule. Um, that's all the information I have about that. So take that uh, as it is, I guess. But overall, from what I understand, it was a very positive meeting that these uh, that uh, Dave and Kenji had with the representatives from the FAA, including Jay Merkel, and that what you really need to know is that FPV is not going to be uh, in violation of the rules. Uh, you can use a remote ID module for Part 107 operations on your home-built aircraft. And uh, the FAA has heard our concerns about not having enough representation for the recreational side of things on the DAC. And uh, I guess we'll have to see where it goes from here. Hopefully, this means the FAA is going to come out with a few new advisory circulars. Um, that's about all I've got, so thanks for watching. Oh, one more quick thing before I go. If you like that little tagline slash logo thing I put at the end of my videos that says change your view, fly FPV, and if you get the double meaning of it, even better. But if you like that and want to have it on a t-shirt, don't forget that you can get one, just like the one I'm wearing right now, and uh, you can also support the FPV Freedom Coalition in the process. To do that, just head over to the FPVFC's website and their store, so fpvfc.org store, and pick one out for yourself.